Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Homekeepers. Come right on in, my friend. So glad to be with you today. I so often think about you. I take your prayer requests home with me and pray for them. And my heart really is so full of thanksgiving for you. And I appreciate it that, uh, you know, last Christmas you sent some really nice cards, made some nice comments, and I want you to know it is greatly appreciated. So glad we have this connection. I have a return guest today. Her name is Karen Whiting. She's an award-winning author, has authored 26 books. We're going to talk about a couple of them today, the newer ones. And uh, so glad to have her back. Uh, we're going to talk about this one, 52 Weekly Devotions. And she really has the talent to make devotions really um, fresh, interesting, a lot of variety. Because uh, you want to get that word of God in those children. And I hope, boy, I hope you have devotions in your home. And Stephanie's here. We're going to make a moist lemon bundt cake. And let me warn you, when you fix it, just don't sit and eat the batter. Because there will be a great temptation to do that. Uh, and also, I want to again offer you The Promise of Security by Beth Moore. Uh, what a great ministry she has. And this is for a gift of any amount. And as I mentioned on a program recently, I don't know if you feel it, but I do, the insecurity in this nation. And I go around and I lock my doors, you know, and I pray God's angels around. It seems like things are getting more violent, meaner, so much arguing and all. But when you have the word of God in your heart, it helps. It makes a big difference. And sometimes I have to remind myself, I know what he said. And that's what's important. So that's yours for any amount. You can call the 800 number or write to me. That information is on your screen. Any amount at all, we greatly appreciate. And now we're going to do this bunt cake. Yes, and that's all so true. Every day, you know what I, th I think? How do people do this without no, Jesus? I know. It. How do people live in this world and see the news and hear all the stuff and don't know that Jesus mm. is in control? Yeah. I, it amazes me. And also... Um, if you just stop and remember one scripture, it'll make all the difference in the world. Because he's got a lot of promises oh, out for, there. He's got so many yep. promises for us. Yep. Okay, so as everyone knows, Arthleen Rippey loves lemon. So <laughs> you'll see lemon all year. Just know that, okay? Anything lemon. Anything I would lemon. Do it. So we have a lemon cake mix. And we have lemon pudding. This is so moist. This is going to be so good. Yeah, so you, when you say pudding, you know it's yes, going to be very so lemon moist. lemon pudding. We and have, I just sprayed this bunt pan because it's a moist you. lemon bunt cake. Yes, and then she's, uh, Arthleen's going to be making a lemon glaze. She's got a cup of powdered sugar. Mm -hmm. She's got lemon, fresh lemon juice and milk. She's just going to take a teaspoon at a time and stir and make a glaze. I'm going to put three eggs in here that have already been You beaten. have no idea how I've been instructed on this. Oh, numerous times. It was hysterical. So, um, yeah. We... It, it seems like we don't have much faith in Mr. Ripley, but we really that's do. That's kind of the message I was getting. A third of a cup of oil. And we have a lemon juice, three tablespoons. This is fresh lemon juice. There's nothing like fresh. Right. Are you and a lemon a, person? Um, I don't love it as much as you mm -hmm. do, but it's refreshing. Mm -hmm. And then here's a cup of milk minus three tablespoons, which is right there. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to mix this up. Look at you. How am I doing? Our fears were unfounded. <laughs> well, we're not there yet. So they told me, uh, probably knowing that I might be prone to just dump it all in. Dun yeah, we're like, don't dump it all in. You'll yeah. ruin the glaze. I mean, they were, they were <laughs> harassing me. I'm not kidding. Susan and Stephanie. Y'all don't believe that. Okay, so you want to do a slow mix at first, and then once it gets... Um, blended, you're going to do a fast mix for two minutes because you want it nice and fluffy. Well, can you, uh, do you have any of those jeans with rips in them? No. <laughs> well, I just saw on Facebook my niece, I mean, she's a minister, she's got great choir and all, and there she picture with her with jeans with big holes in them, so I, I wrote her a note, I said, Bethy, I'll buy you some jeans. Yeah. What size do you want? Yeah, no one needs to see any more of me than they have to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you spoke for a lot of us. <laughs> so I'm good. I'm not 21 anymore, so mm -hmm. you're almost there. Yeah, I think it needs a little more. To oh, me. yes, please. Okay. It has to be pourable. Yeah. 
So then we're gonna put this in a sprayed bump pan and we're gonna bake it at 350 for 45 to 55 minutes. You'll put a toothpick in the center and it'll come out clean. And boy, what a treat for guests if you have them. Yes. And you can see how easy it was to put together. And the reason she told you not to eat all the batter is because maybe, just maybe, I had a few bites of maybe it this morning. Maybe you want to bake it. <laughs> I could just eat it with, I mean, it's just good like this. Pour it over ice cream. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. That's it. Except that's I know everyone's like, raw eggs, raw eggs. It's okay. Okay, is that about right? Yes, that's beautiful. So I'm gonna put this in the bump so pan. So I didn't We're gonna use bake any it. of the milk. No, didn't need any of the milk. You so. know, that is kind of amazing how much uh, that absorbs. Powder sugar is, it'll absorb the liquid quickly. So, mm -hmm. okay, so you're gonna put the glaze over that unbelievably beautiful bunt cake that, that came gorgeous? out of our pan nicely. And I'm gonna just pour this in. Do you just kind of pour it around? Yeah. I have faith in you. You can do it. Make uh -huh. it pretty. Go back and forth. <laughs> if you're doing it. I just... I, I'm trying to watch you and do what I'm doing. <laughs> so I'm, not, I'm, try, I'm trying not to make a mess. This is so good. Well, I'm it's so sure, refreshing. I know one thing. If you or Susan would have done this, it would be better. But no, look, you're doing good. We're going to eat it anyway. It's dripping down the side. That's mm -hmm. all you want. Mm. Yes. And that is going to be some lemony glaze. Yeah, my guest is a cook. Look, you made it beautiful. If we turn it around, it's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so 350. Check it with a toothpick. 45 to 55 minutes. Now, my friends, you see how easy that was? So easy. I'm we haven't been this. here five minutes. Saving haven't. that because it's lickable. <laughs> okay, here you go. <laughs> Thank you. We're making a lot of noise. Yeah, get that glaze. Yeah, I want to get some of the glaze. Mmm. I'm trying to take lady bite, lady little lady bites, because I've watched a few episodes where I took big manly bites, and it's really not very feminine at all. <laughs> no, it's not becoming. Oh, we did it. Extremely refreshing. Oh, now Light that's pretty. Dessert. The way it's dripping all over yeah, everything. Like, mm-hmm. Beautiful. Okay, and you could do this ahead of time, mm -hmm. and that's. I always look for that when you're having company. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you want this recipe, the information is coming up on your screen. Choose the way you would like to receive it, and we will get it right out to you. And I want you to meet, if you haven't met her before, Karen Whiting. Glad to have her back. Stay with it. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. All right, uh, Karen, welcome back to Homekeepers. You've been here a couple of times, haven't you? I think several times, yeah. yes, over Glad the years. Glad to have you back. And you keep cranking these books <laughs> out, lady. That's, congratulations. That's oh, thanks. Yeah, not something I expected to do, but God called me to it. You know, as a mathematician, mm -hmm. I never thought about writing a book. But <laughs> so you, were you uh, a teacher? No, I worked in industry in computer systems analyst work, and then I had my children, and... All of a sudden, I was called into writing by God, and I thought, really? And I went off on a retreat and prayed, and God showed me a vision and gave me a, a painting of it the next morning. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll do everything anyone tells me for five years. If nothing's published, I know I didn't hear right. But within five years, I had contracts for five books. So I've been doing it ever since. <laughs> well, you're obviously a gifted writer, you know, uh, award-winning You've written 26 books. What do you say that I, because I get this question and I, I don't know, I've never written a book. I've done some <laughs> professional writing, but uh, what do you say to that one that call, that asks me, you know, how do you get a book published? Because I've never done it. Right. There's a lot of different ways that people end up getting that done. One of the best things is to go to a Christian writers conference. There's one right in Florida which I think will be in October. They're all over the country. You can contact a writing coach, which is one of the things I do. There's some good publications out there and magazines to subscribe to, but the first thing is to try to really organize your thoughts and make sure, is it something that n hasn't really been done? And, right. you know, there's a ton of marriage books. Do you really have a different, unique twist on it? 
because you have to know that it's saleable. Mm -hmm. That type of thing is part of it. And yeah, because a publishing house mm -hmm. has to put a lot of money in into yes. getting it published. Yes, and so and you have to learn how to pitch the book and how to write well and, and be open. If somebody wants to help you and edit the book or show you how to do it better because joining an area critique group is great mm -hmm. and when you do that you have to be open to they're leading you and they're showing you what you can do better. Mm -hmm. They're not going to do it to cut you down. They're doing mm -hmm. it to help you polish those words to make it the best for God that we can mm -hmm. do. Well, I want to mention this one first and then we'll get to the <laughs> devotion. But... The gift of bread. How new is this? A year and a half, I think. Oh, it's it quite new out. then. It's yes. fairly new, yes. Um, <laughs> this has a lot of information, in it, but it has how many bread recipes? 60 recipes 60. in it, as well as devotions on each chapter. Each bread recipe has a devotion with it. Tips on bread making, heartwarming stories around bread, because mm -hmm. I... I think bread is part of the heart of the home. You know, isn't it fun to, when we savor the bread <clears throat> and we sit back and it helps us open up and talk. Yes, and also uh, when it comes to the communion that we take in church, mm -hmm. I think it was true that in every ir Israeli home there was. Mm -hmm. They had a couple things on the table all the time. Right. And that was some wine and some bread. Yeah, and you had the bread of presence that they had. Yeah. And, and that's why every chapter has biblical insights into bread in the Bible mm -hmm. to go with it. So uh, we're going to get her website up. You can get this through the website. But also, she told me when we can arrange the time, she's going to come and we're going to spend the day doing some of these recipes. That's going to be so fun. <laughs> yes, I uh, love cooking. <laughs> uh, and Stephanie wants to get in on it, too, because right. she's a very enthusiastic cook. All right, this is your newest one, right? Yes. 52 weekly devotions for families called to serve. Uh, does that qualify it? Families called to serve, is that for people in the ministry or what? It's really for people who want their children to develop a heart to serve. Mm -hmm. When we want them to have that servant heart and wanting to be willing to help other people. The stories in it are based upon families who have someone, a member in it that serves in some capacity, whether it's in the military, EMTs, firefighters, law enforcement, church volunteers, missionaries. There's a lot of ways people serve. I'm glad you included <laughs> all those because sometimes we think ministry is in the pulpit. Yeah. And that's <laughs> maybe the least sometimes. Right. Yeah. Um, what, a, what a great idea to target it that way. Do you know how that yes. happened? Well, I grew up with, uh, you know, a grandfather who was fire chief. He'd started the fire company in my hometown. A mother who was a nurse who also went out and helped other people and did things within mm -hmm. the community because of the nursing and married someone who served in the Coast Guard for 22 years. And because of that and so many other people in my family, the dedication page is really long of people Beautiful. who have served and relatives who were law enforcement and all, that I understood that lifestyle. And so I have a little note in every chapter to help people who have that lifestyle of that story. And I realized how it helped me want to serve and helped my children also. Mm -hmm. Well, um, it's, it's something for you moms and grandmothers. I always like to include grandmothers because they're raising a lot of the children. They are. Uh, or even if you're with them just once in a while, just put that thought in their mind of some kind of service. Yes. You know, listen, listen for the voice of God. Right. What, what are your interests? That mm -hmm. very often takes you to that point of service. It does. And grandparents can do it if they don't live nearby. They can get on, compu on the computer, on the phone, mm -hmm. do FaceTime or whatever, and talk with them. Mm -hmm. And every unit has hands-on activities to do. So, And a lot of those are different ways to serve people. Yes, and, and the ideas in this are unending at all. I, you blow my mind, you know, how you can give a fresh twist to something. But I, I'd like to, I like to encourage people to have devotions in their home mm -hmm. with their family. That's the one thing I remember. Yes. It's Daddy, so on Christmas even, he, we'd sit around the tree and mm -hmm. I'm ready to dive in. Weren't mm -hmm. very many presents, but you know, <laughs> Christmas is Christmas to a child. And Daddy said, wait a minute, he got the Bible out. Mm -hmm. now, I didn't want to hear it. I, you know, I <laughs> knew about Mary and the shepherds and all. Um, but now, I don't remember any presents. None. 
Mm -hmm. I remember my dad honored the Lord. And see, we had devotions every day. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, right. um, it wasn't a revival. It wasn't long. But something about hearing your dad pray for you. Yes, I think that makes a big difference. And this is set up weekly, but it's weekly where you can choose which parts of it to do each day or what part to do that week because some weeks may be busier than other weeks. Mm -hmm. And so there's hands and activities, there's a prayer, there's a Bible story, a contemporary story that's always based on a true story of what happened to people mm -hmm. who serve or who were served by community workers. And there's you know, always some scriptures that you can read and then ask questions about little chat prompts that those you can do in the car on the go to incorporate this because I think that besides the devotion, we should let those scriptures and our faith permeate our life mm -hmm. and be woven <clears throat> with what we do. And this gives you a way to do that. You know, the, the breakdown in the home mm. is so obvious in all of culture. Mm -hmm. And I've been tar targeting quite a bit the fatherlessness mm -hmm. in America. That's one of the number one problems. You, the gangs, for mm -hmm. instance, Chicago and those coming across the border, uh -huh. probably very few of them had a dad at home. And I uh, have Carol Kent on every month, and we talk about prisons and prisoners. Uh, so many of them are practically illiterate. They never had mm -hmm. a daddy anywhere to lead and guide them. Right. And uh, so I think anybody who's put this much effort into this to make it fresh and refreshing and kind of do it when it's con where, where it's convenient everywhere so you can uh, take it. Um, I hope you'll take advantage of this. Now, we have her website up, and you can get it through that and also... Amazon, I'm sure. Anywhere <clears throat> books are sold can Anywhere get that. It doesn't sold. matter what bookstore you go to, they can get that because of the publisher that it's with. Yeah, who is the publisher? Hendricks and Rose. And they've been around a <clears throat> long time. They're out of Massachusetts. Wonderful, so yeah. it's, you know, perfectly fine and easy to get that. If they want an autographed copy, then yes, they have to either come where I oh. am or go <clears throat> to the website. the website. But otherwise, it's quite available. Now, you do a lot of speaking, too. I do, yes. I'll be speaking tomorrow over in the Melbourne area, mm -hmm. and I'll be up in Delaware in a couple of weeks. So I. <laughs> what was it that um, made you want to book, write a book about devotions? I, I think it's one of the most needed things. A lot of people mm -hmm. don't even know what it is, really. I know. They don't realize at all what it is. And it was the heart of my family raising my children. My oldest daughter says that her earliest memories are the devotions that we did as a family. Mm -hmm. And, of course, now she's a pastor's wife mm -hmm. and works as a hurricane disaster relief worker and things. And all of my children remember those times that we would gather together around the Bible, whether it was indoors, outdoors. We changed it up to have fun with them. And... It made such a difference mm -hmm. to us that I felt it helped them understand that it wasn't just you're at church. Right. Faith was part of our life all the time, and it was the devotions that brought that home for them and had us do something. And at dinner, we could continue talking about whatever the devotion had been the mm -hmm. day before. Mm -hmm. I also would like to say that <clears throat> whichever parent is interested, do it. Mm-hmm. I had a best friend. She's in heaven today. But she kept waiting for her husband to be the man of the house and take the kids to Sunday school, and he never did it. Never. And it may be, maybe it's the man. Maybe it's the father right. who really wants to lead the kids in the way of the Lord, take them to Sunday school, take them to church, and mm -hmm. the mother doesn't want to do anything. Whoever has the burden, do it. Yes. And, and don't wait for somebody else to get the vision because they might not. Right, right. And... My husband, because he would go out to sea and things, sometimes for months at a time if he was going to the Arctic or somewhere far. And, of course, we just did the devotions. And I bought two books of whatever we did if we were using a book, two of the same Bible the children would be reading from so that he could keep steady and read along with what we were doing and wow. add it into the letters and understand the tapes Because that we was all sending. letter. You weren't Right. We didn't have the all the internet. And, <laughs> but we would record messages for him and he would listen to those and know if it was Bible study what page we were on. And it made him just go right back in with what we were doing when he came home because he was part of that. So if you want your children to remember devotions when they're my age, 
and Karen, who's a lot younger than I am, remember her. Uh, you remember. That's what we remember from our childhood. Isn't that interesting? Yes, yes. And uh, that's what my children remember now more than anything. And In fact, I did an Advent book just because one son said to me, Mom, have you ever written down all the things we did to get ready for Christmas, the Advent and everything? And I said, well, I will. And so I did it and found a publisher who would publish that. And you know, because that was his cherished memories, mm -hmm. and he wanted it as a book to use with his children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know our, I've read uh, some articles, and they say there's a study for this and that and the other thing, I don't know, but uh, one study that was kind of startling about real little kids with all these electronics to play with, mm -hmm. um, not wasn't good for the development of their brain. Right. But even beyond that, the time that is consumed with these devices. Right. People don't understand how much, and I didn't know until I was doing it, devotions help cognitive development for a child. That the reading comprehension, because you're reading from the Bible, which has a much richer vocabulary than the children's books or anything they're reading in school. Besides the Holy Spirit. <laughs> right, right. But I mean, the vocabulary yeah, of the Bible is absolutely. amazing it's when classic. you're reading that to them. Yes. And that it helps them because you become more analytical and critical thinking because you're asking questions and chatting about it and talking about what you're reading about. And so it develops what it means. all of those skills. Yes. And I did not realize till I saw how quickly they grew and how they went past their peers in their reading abilities and things. And it just really? made a difference. Yes. Really? Now, uh, did you do this when all your children were growing up? It was, it was just a part of your life. It was a part right. of our life every day. Sometimes as they got older, we would change up when we did it because we'd look mm -hmm. in, you know, with sports and everything. My biggest thing every Monday was to sit and the calendar and write down what time can we fit the devotion in best. You know, even if it was just before dessert, well, if it wise, was afternoon, yes. because it was such a priority for us to do mm -hmm. that. But you considered their calendar too. Yes, I did. Um, you can get real adamant about <laughs> things and turn them off, make them angry. Yes, right. You can do that with kids. <laughs> Let me again remind you, 52 devotions for families who serve, who are called to serve, and... Um, if you want to write down that title, and we've mentioned the places that you can get the book. And then this one, which is not an old book at all, uh, we'll be talking more about that when Karen comes back. But it's all a, it's got 60 bread recipes in it, and we'll do some of them when she comes. And uh, also the whole meaning of bread. It, it, that's yes. one of the most oh. inspirational words right. ever. It is, and as I said, I have it's a devotional cookbook because it does have the devotion, the biblical insights mm -hmm. into bread in the Bible, and from you know Abraham presenting bread to visitors through Revelation talking about the cost of grain, bread and the ingredients are throughout the Bible, and of course Jesus giving us communion. And I am the bread <laughs> of life. Yes. Um, so that this book has far more than recipes in it, and uh, gives. I think it gives new meaning uh, what you've done with this book to the importance of what a wife and a mother does, mm -hmm. you know, when they're fixing yes. something for their family. It's yes, sacred. Right. It really is sacred. Right. And, and what bread can do, I mean, I would take that bread out of the oven when we lived in Connecticut and the children would be coming in the door from school with the smell of this hot bread and they would quickly one would quickly get the drinks another would get the plates and napkins and we'd sit down and, and somebody else had gotten the butter and honey and we'd slice it and they would have this hot bread with the butter and honey melting on it and it would just open their hearts to talk about the day <laughs> and talk about some of the uh, stories in your book and yes. some of the meanings right yes and that was fun. And, you know, so if dad was away, sometimes that would become the time we would do our devotion uh -huh. because they were just ready to talk and listen. Absolutely, yes. Well, I look forward to you coming back. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll get in the kitchen and, and do some of these. When for, you said there's uh, yeast recipes. Quick bread quick recipes. Breads and muffins. Even and some with refrigerator dough for those who want to do something at home but they mm -hmm. don't know how to make it from scratch yet. Mm -hmm. Very good. We look forward to that very much. And um, you stay with me. I have a couple of things to say before we have to say goodbye. I hope you'll uh, really pay attention to it. We want to offer you something that's 
absolutely free, but I think it's something that's absolutely important to your love of the scripture. So stay with us. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. I recently came across an article in my father's Bible, dated 1930, so that's 90 years, and it's so powerful. We did offer it on this program many years ago, and it is so great, such a great description of the Bible that I thought a lot of you might like it. You might like to put it in your own Bible, so this is it. This book contains the mind of God, the state of man, the way of salvation, the doom of sinners, and happiness of believers. Its doctrines are holy. Its precepts are binding, its histories are true, and its decisions are immutable. Read it to be wise, believe it to be safe, and practice it to be holy. It contains light to direct you, food to support you, and comfort to cheer you. It is the traveler's map, the pilgrim's staff, the pilot's compass, the soldier's sword, and the Christian's character. Here heaven is restored. Paradise opened and the gates of hell disclosed. Christ is its grand subject. Our good is its design and the glory of God its end. It should fill the memory, rule the heart, and guide the feet. Read it slowly, frequently, and prayerfully. It is a mine of wealth, a paradise of glory, and a river of pleasure. It is given you in life, will be open at the judgment, and remembered forever. It involves the highest responsibility, rewards the greatest labor, and condemns all who trifle with its holy contents. I think you'd like to have a copy of that in your own Bible. And the information is on your screen. Just ask for it. We'll send it to you. If you could send a gift, that would be great. But we want you to have it. Fold it up and put it in your own Bible, and it will remind you constantly of how powerful that book is. Okay, friends, so glad to be with you, but join me next time. Remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.